All right, everyone, this is our first lesson and our first PowerPoint over early humans. So let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, early humans. So where did we all come from? So in the beginning of man, we believe that history started in Africa. So what we understand is that we found a bunch of artifacts and fossils, and most of them we found, the oldest we found all around the world have been in Africa. So because of this, uh, we believe that everybody started in Africa. It doesn't matter what your race is, what your culture is, everybody, you know, we have a theory that humanity started in Africa and then we branched out. So these artifacts were found in other part, parts of the world, but you gotta figure out, we figured out that Africa is the oldest. Now, how do we figure out it's the oldest? We use carbon-14. So what this is, does is it measures the amount of carbon in an object. Now, there's carbon in everything. So me, you, uh, artifacts, bones, uh, anything. So there's carbon there. And we determine how much carbon is left in it or how little. And then we are able to determine how long something's been there, or how late. So with this, we then had the migration of early humans. So this is where we believe we all started here in Africa. And the specific place where we landed is, as you can see here from Africa, we went from Africa on the map to your left, up through Egypt, past Asia, into India, well, into Asia some more, and then going further and further to Australia. So we believe that we moved down to South Africa, and we moved upwards, and to the right and everywhere else and then keep moving from there so as you can see where all these arrows start is a small area with water because water is the most important thing that humans needed back then that and food but the reason they're all moving around is because they were hunting for their food so with humanity we have certain stages of our lives so the first was the atralopicus i'm obviously going to say these things wrong you can laugh about that Next is the Homo habilis, or Homo uh, habilis. So as you can see, we started all, you know, as humanity has evolved. Next, we have Homo erectus. So, you know, we can start to see more human-like appearance, you know, more muscles, you can see. Neanderthal, the standard, like, oh, oh human and stuff. Oh, he looks you know, not too good. And then Cro-Magon. So eventually we got to, bam, humanity, us. So this is what we believe in, that we think these are the five early hominids. So hominids is the humans. So the Austro Australopithecus, sounds like a dinosaur, lived from 4 million to 1 million BC. This was the first human-like creature to walk upright. So he got up and started moving around on his own feet. Uh, Mary Leakey found evidence in Africa, and Johansson finds Lucy. You might have heard of Lucy before in your other classes. So this is Lucy, or you know, a picture of Lucy of what we believe that skull is. So she lived 3.5 million years ago, and is the first full skeleton found in the species. So you know, you have theories and stuff, but then when we finally found Lucy, we're like, oh, yep, this is true. Why is it true? Bam, drop skeleton on the floor. I'm sure they didn't do that. So like that. Next, we have the Homo habilis, uh, very um, uh, weird people. So lived 2.5 million years to 1.5 million BC. So this is our next stage of human evolution. Next, we have the habilis, means man of skill. So uh, what this means is that, as you can see, he's holding in his hand some rocks. So we're trying to figure out how to use the rocks. So thought to be the first to make stone tools. So basically, you know, you use the tools to cut the meat, cut the bones. Basically, they were like, okay, we just killed this animal. And using my hands to tear away the skin and tear away everything, that takes too long. And it hurts a lot. So you use stones. Basically, they probably just found a rock on the ground, just started hitting something with it, and hopefully it cut. So if anyone out there is watching this is playing Minecraft, they basically Minecraft it. They just got some... They just got something, hit it with something else to create something. So, you know, you're already here for first, you know, humans use Minecraft forever. So they could even cut elephant meat with these uh, stone tools they use. So jokingly known as the handyman. So these are their stone tools. So don't think of like tools today or anything like that. Their tools were just rocks that looked like other rocks. Oh, how'd you get that shiny rock uh, or that, uh, you know, that rock that was sharp or whatever. Oh, I used another rock to hit that rock. Whichever rock was sharper, that was my sharp rock. That was it. 
So, you know, not exactly, you know, crazy with the examples or anything. So there's uh, arrowheads down at the bottom, which look like arrowheads actually, but they didn't create arrows yet. So those were the knives and, or, you know, one of the knives. So all of these are just, you know, stone club, stone everything. So it's that guy in Minecraft that doesn't know how to do anything other than stone. Next we have our Homo erectus. So lived 1.6 million to 30,000 BC. So we're almost, you know, coming full. Remains were found in Africa, Asia, and Europe. So these guys traveled around. They didn't just stay in Africa. These are the guys that started to spread up and move forward. So this is considered to be the upright man. So by that, you can tell by his posture, he's standing upright. Uh, with these people, they created new ways to use them with stone tools. Instead of just, ooh, I use rock to cut meat. And that's it. I use rock on other rock to make sharp rock. Now they realize like, oh my gosh, we can dig, we can scrape, you know, things like that. So this is the group that controls and creates fire. All right. So these are the guys that found fire. Not necessarily that they, well, to, to control and create fire. So yeah, so, you know, there, there had been fire before, but they had no idea to create it. So the way there was fire before was because thunder would strike trees randomly, you know, for the weather. And then fire would show up, but they had no idea how to do it until now. So they also thought to create their own spoken or oral language. So remember, communication was not a thing. Don't think that we started off and like, oh, hello, how are you? No, nobody had an idea. There was mostly just hand gestures and maybe a ugh or a grunt or something to try to figure out. So as you can see, these are the different ways. So as we've adapted and as we've grown as humanity, our bodies have changed a lot too. So you have high, narrow shoulders. So on the left, you have a walkers and tree climbers, the Australopithecus. And then next you have the Homo erectus, the walker and the endurance runner. So the one on the left is better for you know tree climbing. The other one on the right is walking and endurance runner. So what we can tell from these and these bodies is that the one on the right it was the one to travel a lot more because their body was capable of it the one on the left small hips small everything no nah, they're not going anywhere anytime soon so because of that you know you already have your one person you're going to choose so it all depended on where they lived and how they lived and their body would change it would take a while like a long time millions of years but eventually it did as you've seen so next we have the homo sapiens so these are your common humans these are like in tv shows or anything like that you see these are these are it so they've lived from hundred thousand to four hundred thousand years ago all right the cro magon man and neanderthals are considered the first two early homo sapiens so you know the first actual like hey this human actually looks like a human like your every average day human so they traveled from Africa to Asia, Europe, and Americas. So what you have to remember is, if you remember from world geography, is that the world is kind of all together still. We're still that supercontinent before, you know, South America splits off, I believe, from uh, Africa. Same thing with North America, how they all split apart. So if you remember that from uh, your world geography class, that applies here. So that's how we were able to travel around. So these were known as the wise men, but of course, you know, comparing everybody else you know wise man is it really that's what the quotes are there all right so the chromagon and the neanderthals so the chromagon on the left we have they were found in europe so europe is you know that's such a broad term but like england france germany stuff like that basically the you know for those of you who don't remember uh, europe is the continent above africa so Neanderthals were found in Europe and Southwest Asia. So we can tell from this, the Neanderthals actually got around. They got up, moved around, and went to other places instead of staying in one area. The Cro-Magon were considered to be fully modern humans, all right? So by fully modern humans, they mean like how we look now. So not like, you know, anything else. They weren't probably, you know, fully modern in the head, you know, brain-wise, but appearance-wise they were. Uh, we can tell the Neanderthals battled them for food and land. Again, if you're trying to survive in anything whatsoever, you're making sure your group survives. So they probably ran into each other, and they're probably terrified of each other, of what they looked like, comparing each other, and so they fought to the death. Uh, created cave art. Cave art is one of the most important things that they created. It lets us know everything about 
uh, their civilization. Next, we have the first at ritual burials. So what these ritual burials are is actually, you know, say you see somebody die, you're like, okay, they're dead and just walk on. These Neanderthals actually took the time to stop, bury someone, <laughs> and pay respects. So this is huge. It might not seem like a big thing because it happens all the time here in this modern age, but this is huge because now we have people actually caring for one another, which had never been seen before. Next, we have the studied animals and stalked their prey. So cro used their abilities, but of course they were in Europe. So Europe and little bits of uh, Africa. So that's where a lot of animals are. So they were able to practice. And then Neanderthals were very muscular and built like cavemen. So this is a quick little uh, timeline of how we got here. So just because we evolved does not mean that all of humanity evolved. So as you can see, you know, sometimes like, oh, you know, so-and-so was here, but there were still bits of those. There are still bits of those because, you know, obviously you're not going to get more of the same product unless you're, you know, breeding more. And that was a very difficult thing. So we're at, you know, homes of homo sapiens, you know, we're homo sapiens sapiens. All right, your everyday life is quite a bit different than from what we did before. So you lived in clans or groups of people. Clans were mostly like, your entire family. So I don't mean just like your mom, your dad, you and your siblings or however your situation is. It'd be like uncle, aunt, grandma, second cousin, cousin and a half, cousin in law, like everybody was together. What they would do is they would travel from place to place. So these people were nomadic, all right? So they knew to uh, just stay in one place or they knew not to stay in one place, sorry. Uh, because they had no idea what to do. So they had to move to place to place for animals. So they were following their food source. So because they didn't know how to grow any food whatsoever. They're like, oh, here's a wild plant or a wild animal. Kill it. Uh, all the animals are gone. All right, pack up your stuff. Let's go. It's time to move again. So they didn't stay in one place. Men were usually the hunters. Women usually gathered, you know, hunting and gathering. Men had more muscles and more prepared to hunt animals. Uh, women usually just gathered the plants and took care of the kids, but they were always trying to look for some type of shelter because they didn't know how to build it either. So they were looking for shelter, water, and food, three most important things of humanity, and they were just always in a constant look for it. All right, so these cave paintings, the oldest are found from 30,000 to 40,000 years ago. So as you can see, these are some pictures that they did. And these are actually the Neanderthals and, you know, the people who are like, man, these are pretty good paintings. Well, they're old times, not found uh, current. So these are found in Europe, Africa, and Australia. This is why we know where they're at, because of these paintings. So because of these different paintings, we now are more prepared for them. And, but we don't understand them. So there's like, okay, maybe this is part of a religious ceremony, or maybe they're doing something else. So we have this right here, Paleolithic cave paintings in southwestern France. We don't know what, you know, what, what could they really be trying to say? Are they trying to say, oh, there's a bull there? Or, ooh, I saw a bull. I saw a horse. You know, it all depends on what you think uh, they're trying to say. We, we don't know for sure. Next, we have these cave paintings. Uh, again, we, all can only, we can only do our best to try to figure out what to do for it. So you just take a look at all of these symbols and what they truly represent. And we'll actually never know because, you know, it's not like they wrote out, oh, yeah, I was writing, the, drawing this because, so fortunately, we don't have anything like that. And then 30,000-year-old cave painting of a hyena found in the Chavit Cave. So this is you know, in France. So all the way up in France, I, either these people were saying, hey, there's a hyena here or watch out for these or possibly, the, or possibly they thought the hyena was their god, you know, who knows? Or maybe they watched Lion King and they're like, man, what was that favorite character of mine? And decided to draw it out. We'll never know. So this is just, uh, just a waste. And then the cave of Alamira near Sander, Spain. So again, this looks to be some type of ox is what I would assume. And again, we can only guess what it is. Uh, and, you know, for any of you are thinking, like, man, how did they paint it and stuff like that? I'm pretty sure they used blood. So all that red is probably just uh, some blood. I don't think there was any red paint lying around unless they got a bunch of red something and smushed it. 
So there's that, and then there's the uh, the black. I don't know what they use for black ink or anything else, but. All right, so the exit ticket or what the Google form is going to be is describe at least three similarities between the, the Homo habilis and the Australopithecus, and then also describe at least three similarities or differences between the Cro-Magon and the Neanderthals. All right, so just go ahead and do that, and that should be it. And so just make sure to finish up all your assignments, and if you haven't, make sure to clock in for attendance. All right, you guys have a good day. Till next time.